Good morning, everybody. You're tuned to Computers 2K now on the Nissan Communications Network. I'm Amnon, your host for the next couple of hours. Along with Nick. Good morning. Who's in the studio, as you can see. I am. And Spence is here. Hello. Hello. And Katie's here. Good morning. Morning. Oh, and Gal is here. Good morning. Good morning. Our number is 919-518-9773, Computers 2K Voice on Skype. And today's show is made possible by vMix Software and is sponsored by Tom Sinclair of Live Streaming View. So last night, Nick said, we need to fix a three-box shot. There it is. Yeah, so everybody can be on the screen. So the whole, ga whole gang's together. Now it feels like everybody's looking at me. <clears throat> well, they are. <laughs> <laughs> it can, it can, it can, <clears throat> it can even be like that. You are the eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think that's the move. Nah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too much. Now you're looking like like Spencer talking about the CNN with 18 <laughs> live shots all on the screen yeah. at the same time. <laughs> You have to get a still uh, of Jeff Jeffrey Tubin to put in there too. <laughs> so, what's going on? Mm. Somebody. Oh what is? Well, first of all, I got a strong um, <clears throat> um, uh, <clears throat> a talk down that we are uh, interfering with uh, World Cup. Uh, yeah, uh, broadcasting. <laughs> that is true. I can't, Wait, what do you mean? Uh, it's happening. It's starting in what? In in an hour yeah, or something? Ten like o'clock Eastern. Yeah. Oh come on, yeah. amateurs! You can watch both at the same time. That is true. You and just have to you listen. Need a, to you need a window with a, with a, a tiny little screen of the World Cup in the background running. So I, I told Sarid that uh, he should update me, and will update. Uh, will 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 stream updates. Throughout the show, if there's anything ha interesting <laughs> happening, <laughs> nail nail into the 67th minute. Who, who's playing? Argentina, Morocco, uh, I think. Or Argentina, no, France. Argentina and France. Yeah. Oh, it is a it's a it's a historic uh, game for both. France won the last Mondial, the last uh, World Cup. So if they win this time, it's a back to back win, which is something uh, unique. And this is probably the last time Messi is going to play. And he has not won a Mondial yet. He has been to the finals, but he has not more won a Mondial yet. So both camps are really, really excited. It's a great day to be a soccer fan. Uh, you mean football? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Don't go there. <laughs> It's uh, it is funny seeing uh, uh, the reaction uh, to this sport here in the U.S. Mm. and how it has grown uh, throughout the what ten past ten years. So yeah, and I'm not a sports fan in any way. Like I enjoy a good game maybe, but I don't pick sides. So <laughs> yeah, Nick, you got me to watch. Yeah, you watched the Iran U.S. game. Yeah, and I. I, I I just couldn't keep watching. I said, "This is like kindergarten." Hey, you gotta watch hockey. I'm a huge 100% hockey fan. Hey, yesterday was a big game, right around here. 
Yeah, they had a home game. It was good. They won. They played they the Penguins today. Yeah. yeah. I was going to go to the game today, but we had to Sh- shuffle some things around. Speaking of going to the game, <clears throat> this is could not be further off topic, but I'm going to bring it up anyway to, to air my personal grievances. So I'm up here in Raleigh. I'm only about two hours from Charlotte or a little, little over two hours from Charlotte. And the, the Pittsburgh Steelers happened to be playing the Carolina Panthers. And the Panthers suck and the Steelers suck. So I thought, all right, instead of going home, I'm just going to drive down to Carolina and watch the game. Tickets for this game are still over $100 for two teams that blow two backup quarterbacks. I'm pissed. I actually, had to, I thought they'd be more. <laughs> For, Honestly, I, mean, I these thought teams football are teams were really expensive. They are normally, even when you've got two decent, you've got one decent team that's playing a, a bad team. They are, but God, so I looked at the the Jets are playing the Lions today. Both of those teams suck. Those tickets are forty seven dollars in New York. Oh, that I'd okay. be all in on. One hundred and eleven dollars okay. is the cheapest ticket to get into in, the Panthers. Game. In that case, I can I can yeah. see now. So I'm 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 pretty ticked. I wonder. Um, mm what the stadium size is for what the panthers yeah because it's uh, huge yeah. oh, okay well, never mind because uh arizona they just moved into a new stadium seventy five thousand. or okay no nope, there's no excuse no 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 excuse and the and it's it'll it's going to end up being empty because nobody is going to there's a there's hundreds of tickets still for sale right now it's money laundering scheme yeah i'm, I'm disappointed besides <laughs> it's cold I don't care if it's cold. It's football. You expect it to be cold. But not at $111. So Take a chance and wait for the game to start. And buy so that's football. what I was also thinking. But that's a, that's, a commi- that's a time and gas commitment to get drive down yeah, to Charlotte. And then it's true, three yeah. and a half yeah. hours home to Wilmington from Charlotte. So you know, then I, you're, I'd be getting in you know, probably around 8 or 9 o'clock. I got to work early tomorrow. So... The best deal I ever got on tickets was waiting until a game started and yeah. walking up and getting getting box box seats. But see, they a, don't do uh, that anymore, Spence, because nobody's got physical tickets. It's all digital, so there's no yeah, like guy with do? a with a s- trench coat of tickets. It doesn't exist anymore. They're verified tickets, and it's <laughs> they use like they say NFT technology to transfer them. I don't yeah. want that. I just want a damn ticket. How how much is a ticket to go and watch a Baseball game. Baseball's like, different because there's so many games in the season. You can get you can get into a baseball game for thirty or forty bucks. Okay, and how about football? It's more expensive, hundreds of dollars. Oh, so it is because there's only eighteen games. Okay, and you, they don't play every day. I mean, baseball you can you know, team will play nine, ten, eleven days in a row, um, which is it's always been the case. Huh. But it's still with I was uh, I was disappointed. And, and you have uh, to factor in, factor in the parking too. Parking is super exactly. expensive. Yeah. I was and gonna, sometimes it's going to be more expensive than the ticket. <laughs> I was going to drag Amnon down there with me to watch the game, but I guess I can't do this. <laughs> my my Christmas surprise or my Hanukkah surprise is not going to work. I guess <laughs> tickets are too damn expensive. Well, you got the expectation out of Hanukkah surprises. But <laughs> Hanukkah surprises are way low here. <laughs> well, I tell you what, it's not going to be a great game because both of the teams are not good, so it, it, you would not be thrilled. <laughs> and then you got to buy an $18 beer and a $27 hamburger. I mean, it's a, I dropped $500 going to this game, and that's not, it's not worth it. All right. So let's, uh, let, let's, let me um, kind of warn. Those who are trying to buy tech gifts for their loved one. I had a customer here that wanted to put an SSD in a machine. And I said, yeah, just go and get one and bring it over and we'll put it in for you. There was some other stuff to do on the computer. It was already here. So she came the next day. She said, yeah, I got it online. So I'm holding the, the box. And see a picture of an NVMe. I said, this is not an SSD. This is an NVMe. But it says on it, SSD. And I said, sure enough, it does say SSD, but it's an, it's an NVMe. For those that don't, that are not technical, you see something online that here is the drive. And she said, and I got a two terabyte because it was only $15 more than a one terabyte. Okay. It you need to watch. Need to watch out. 
NVMe looks like a, a memory module, memory sim, kind of, that needs to plug in to a specific socket on the board, on the motherboard. And only newer computers, and newer, I would probably think, about two, three years. Yeah, yeah. You, if you're trying to buy an SSD drive, what you have in mind, like one of those two and a half inch SATA, that you need to make sure that it is a drive and not an NVMe. It's you need to read what it says on the package on where, where are you going. If you go online and you just see SSD, and it, I guess they emphasize that it's an ssd well of course it's an ssd but it's an ssd yeah of first course. of all it is an ssd it is an nvme ssd yeah as they, opposed to a sata ssd right but the thing is it says ssd i mean yeah it's an ssd drive blah 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 nvme so it was right. the last word in the description on the box the nvme and people that don't know the difference, it's easy to do it. So if you try to give somebody a present and you bought one, just make sure that you got a SATA SSD drive. If you no, don't. Sorry, know. you got to tell them they're on their own. No. Here you go. Thanks. Bye. Got you a nice gift. I mean, it's, 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 it, it's a downer when you get something like that on Christmas morning and find out that you can't use it there is a solution though okay there is i think we covered this a while back there is an a, a sata uh adapter for NVMe. okay but you don't get you don't you wouldn't normally get it you wouldn't buy it with uh, yeah you need to, yeah you still the down but, uh, uh, that, that's I'm not, I, th I, I see it as a shortcoming on your end you should have like five like that yeah. Laying, a, laying right. around the way we know you. The question <laughs> so, is, what no, kind of I machine didn't. was it? <laughs> so, what kind of machine was so, it? What? What kind of machine was it? Was it, it a was a Dell. A it was a Dell. It, she said it was a three-year-old. Desktop. Desktop. And it was, it, it, it had to have been older because uh, she was asking me also about upgrading to Windows 11. And when I did the check, it says it's not ready because TPM was one point something and the processor was not supported. And I can't remember. There were a few things. I said, like, okay, never mind. But uh, just make sure that if you buy an SSD, I mean, when somebody's telling me SSD drive, I'm thinking about a two and a half inch exter external versus NVMe. Like a regular drive that you put in one of the bays inside the computer. Now, if the if it is a laptop that you're trying to upgrade, then you need to look the other way. You need to get an NVMe again if it's new. You need to make sure that it has, let's say, an eight gig NVMe in it. I mean, uh, two fifty six NVMe in it, and you want to. Get a terabyte or or five twelve, so you need to get an NVMe. Now I have no idea. And anybody chime in? In the old days, when you upgrade the drive, there was a limit of what the motherboard will support, of the BIOS will support as far as hard drive. You couldn't take one of the uh, computers that had a one gig drive and say, "Oh, now they have five hundred twelve gig." It won't. It wouldn't talk to it. There was all kind of things you had to do to get it to work. So I don't know if that's the case with the not anymore laptop. Okay. So yeah. So for a laptop, or you can, you know, yeah, you lose the element of surprise, but you can ask the person if they know what's going on, if that's what it takes. Or when you go to buy it, you you need to know what model computer you have and ask, will that fit such and such. So just just for you to know. And there are a lot of computers out there, apparently, that cannot support more than one internal hard drive. 
Why? The ba- there are no bays for it. You don't need a bay. Does it have SATA? If it's an SSD, you don't need to put it in a bay. Exactly. But I mean, people Duct tape will, people and zip have, ties work great. Yeah, that's a, well. I put I I actually put a. Uh, he had the that other customer had a uh, two terabyte, three and a half inch spinning, mm-hmm. and I'm looking and say, oh shoot, there's nowhere to put it. But it was a Lenovo or something like that, and it had a smaller power supply at the bottom. I actually velcroed it to the power supply and put a piece of foam before I put the cover on to press it against it. And I said, just don't. Jerk the case. Don't shake. Yeah, <laughs> it, it works. But don't I mean, you treat your computer like a magic I don't eight ball. And there was a bunch of room under there. It nobody, was empty it, space. Nobody puts. Dr- there's well, no, nobody's putting a drive in a computer. Why? Yeah. Why would you put one in there? When you buy a computer off the shelf and it's got a one, uh, uh, we're talking about like low end consumer machines. Yes, two or three hundred. Yes, three four hundred bucks. Yeah. What do you? You're not loading that thing up with hard drives. Huh? I, I just. I, I don't. It's for them. It's added cost minor added cost on though but still added cost to put the hard drive bay in there uh, and guess. nobody's using it i guess I, I mean that's the only thing i can take away from it nobody's using it there was and i don't know for what I, oh i guess i do know that that was for a full size cd rom because it had a cd rom in it uh, yeah and and but those are becoming less and less thin too. one but there was space underneath yeah. in it but there was just no cage in there no sure you can buy i'm sure Somebody on Amazon Maybe. makes a, <laughs> yeah, anchor makes a, but like, like cage for it. But like you said, you know, okay. Velcro it. Yeah. SSDs There's though, not any. spinning drives. Right. Yeah, this you can, and it's light, so it's. Yeah. Not, I mean, I mean, you could just leave an SSD hangling, yeah. dangling. It really doesn't yeah. matter. The bits don't fall. <laughs> <laughs> Gravity doesn't have a big impact. Yep. Um. Yeah. So you were doing a. a um, uh, a PSA. I'll take. I'll do a PSA now. Uh, if you're going to be buying anything online, um, be aware that you're running up against your threshold for uh, Christmas. According to oh, yeah. um, the Postal Service, Priority Mail needs to be out by tomorrow, and Priority Mail Express, which is today, um, needs to be out by Thursday. If you want to get it by Christmas Eve or Christmas. It'll be coming in Christmas Eve. Yeah, and that's pushing it. That's very much pushing it. But I'm already seeing online now. So specials is a little bit weird this week because a lot of things on Amazon, even now, at least to Wilmington, it all depends on your yeah, where you, where you live. are. Uh, but so many things on, and Amazon actually does a cool thing. Cool thing. Um, if you try to buy something and it's, they know that you're buying stuff for Christmas, it'll say, since this won't arrive, try an Amazon gift card. So at least they're kind of giving you a, like it's on the product page on the side, so um, you're 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 burning fumes at this point. Yeah, and one thing to consider is that if it says get it by a certain time when you're looking at buying it, put it in the cart first and go yes. to pay for it to see what it actually says it will come because it doesn't mean it's going to be what they tell you yeah. when they advertise it. I was I, I saw something also on Amazon that I never noticed before. Try before you buy. On Amazon? Oh, I've used it. I've used it a couple of okay, times. Okay, what's now. the difference? You don't pay for you it don't when pay you do for that? It. You oh. don't pay for it. I did that with shoes. It was great. <laughs> yeah, that's it's, I it's three from clothing. Shoes. I, I right. came, I tried them on, two of them I didn't want, I sent them back. Ah, look at this. Hot dog, new shoes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's their yeah. that is their way of trying to um lessen the anxiety that you don't deal with when you go to a Kohl's or a Macy's or a JC Penney. That's their equivalent. Because for example, I oh. don't buy shoes, clothes, or any of that stuff online because I, I have a preconceived notion. But if it's try free and they don't charge you, what, what's the difference? Who cares? Yeah, and I know that it's not going to have my size. Yeah. It just, it, I wear size 14 shoes. Mm. I mean, I 36 inseam pants. I, they don't have them in the store. Yeah. So I have to order it and try it that way. Yeah, which is which, which will eventually go. I went. Did I talk about this last week? That I went to a, a mall last weekend. They still well, exist. I went to the mall yesterday for food, and it was the worst decision of my Why life. Why did you go to a food court? What was what were you thinking? No, 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 no. There's there's restaurants around the mall, 
And um, that was and a so, terrible decision. Well, see, I could get in and get out and out and because I use, use the back roads and it was great. And the problem and, and I went into the restaurant and I was doing takeout and I ordered, but I guess they're still hit with the COVID slam or something because they were understaffed. And that was the problem. And, uh, and then there's all these people. I was like, this was a horrible mistake. You went to a mall eight days before Christmas and were shocked that the restaurant was But no, busy. it wasn't that many people there, though. <laughs> like, so, yeah, the parking lot was full. And, but, but I didn't oh, go boy. there to shop. I went there to, to get food. And, How long did and, it take? So when I, when I got in and ordered, uh, it took an hour, almost an hour oh. to get me my food. But here's the deal. Like there wasn't that many people in the restaurant. So mm. I guess they were understaffed. Like everything was set up that it looked fine. Like I got in, I ordered, I parked, everything was fine. Everybody was going into the mall to shop, but I wasn't going into the mall. There's like, there's like restaurants outside of the mall. I went to the restaurant outside of the mall and it was fine. But anyways, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, so you were going to say that you went. Oh, yeah, I was. Uh, I was surprised to see how much uh, activity was ongoing, and it is. You know, it was at that point two weeks before Christmas. It was last Saturday. Um, I was surprised to see how many people were in J.C. Penney's and huh? uh, Belk and uh, a couple of those other stores. I was. Yeah, I was surprised. Mm. Did you buy anything? Yeah, I did. Lots of. Where, where? I, I, I went. To, I needed to buy some some new pants. So you noticed that a lot of people were walking there was a, around with I, bags? Oh, yeah. Plenty of people with bags. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I was, uh, there wasn't anything in the mall besides those big box stores. I mean, the whole rest of the mall was practically vacant. Um, besides the food court and like the guy selling gold coins. But other, than, but, other, but other than that. Um, Man, my, my mall's pretty hopping. Yeah. No, the mall in Wilmington is not. Independence well, Mall is that, not hopping. Yeah, that's, that's how it started over here with uh, Cary Town Center. Yeah. It will eventually okay. close out, yeah. which, is, which, I mean, is, is fine. But I was surprised to see how many people were there. Well, they yeah. have a train that runs through the mall, a little, uh, little, um, little two stroke engine train you can drive you around. We'll it? drive you around the mall. No, I didn't want to pay for it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I thought about it though. It was cool. They had it like all. They had Christmas lights wrapped all over it. It looked fun. Now I kind of want a train, like a little train to ride around the neighborhood. That's really? Cool. I'll yeah. specials next week. Stay tuned. Well, you know what I'm thinking <laughs> of. You know when uh, kids have those uh, little jeeps. Yeah. I kind of, I kind of want that, but I don't want an ATV. Like I don't want a like hardcore, but just like a little kids jeep. What if we got else? you like the pink Cadillac <gasps> one? A golf cart. You know what I need? I was describing a golf cart. I need a golf cart. That's exactly what you were describing, but I wasn't going to say that because that. Yeah, be... I want a golf cart. <laughs> Got to go down to Costco and check out the electric bikes. Oh, yeah. And the electric bikes are pretty neat. Yeah. yeah those... they, have a, they have a travel one, a folding one. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You throw you know, it in the that, trunk. That brings up something. Guy, you have one that's total, a car that's total electric? No. Oh, so hybrid. it's a hybrid. <laughs> you could pedal it. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is the Flintstones. No. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, I was thinking about it. And I, we were, I was talking to, about it with uh, Nick. You know, they were saying how it's got like 200, 300 miles uh, range and all that. What happens with these cars when you use the AC? It, go, it drains faster. I mean, faster. how much faster? It depends on the car. It depends on how cold you want to make it. It depends yeah. on the temperature. I mean, yeah. does it eat half of it? Does it eat? Probably not half. It depends but... on the car. If, if, whether you use heat or air, air, air runs a compressor. Heat runs a resistive coil. So it's, <laughs> wow. it's not a heat pump yeah. or anything like yeah. that. So. No, uh, but uh, Amnon makes a... So Amnon's question is, Does is the engine like, Mar much more substantive in in its drain than the AC, right? We know the AC's effect on on gasoline, mm -hmm. right? It has a what a, a 15, 20 percent uh, impact, right on the Maybe. mileage, Maybe. right? Maybe. Depending on the make, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, was uh, the, it's a good question. I I don't I don't think anybody talks about it though. So, yeah. Yeah, but I, it's, I've. Well, I've read several accounts of people that are testing cars for long distance to see what the conditions are like. How can I drive from here to Chicago? And what are the implications of where are the charging stations and all that? And they're doing reviews 
of the trip. So, and one thing they talked about was they hit bad weather and they had to run the defroster and the wipers and all this other stuff. And it greatly reduced their distance. And mm -hmm. had to take that into account as part of their trip. They said, don't, there, there is no drive through trips with an electric car yet for, for or distances over 250 miles. They said, it just doesn't exist because you can't, you can't reliably say I'm going to make it without, if you run into circumstances beyond your control. So take this for what it's worth from car and driver from 2020, the Tesla model three lost 60 miles with HVAC running. Wow. That's a lot, which is yeah. a lot on a car that probably only, which has a range of what, like 300 miles or something like that. Yeah. So it's yeah. 20%. No, that's more. That's close. Yeah, third. It's 30 something percent. But it depends on the 30, temperature. 30, I mean, yeah, there's, yeah, a lot of, there's a lot of factors. Yeah. Yeah. So but it, you it notice it so much more because on a gas car, even though it affects your performance, you, ha you can drive more than 200 miles on the, mm -hmm. on the gas, so it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. It, it yeah. doesn't matter as much. It depends on what vehicle. Amnon has a few that don't. Don't, don't go, go that far. <laughs> Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, Amnon's, <laughs> some of Amnon's cars don't go 200 miles on a tank of gas. <laughs> That's also true. <laughs> All right. So I don't know if we talked about it. Uh, Microsoft is offering Windows 11 users a preview of an update that fixes some gaming performance problem. What gaming performance problem? The software maker originally warned of issues with lower than expected performance in some games earlier in the month. After some Windows 11 users that had upgraded to the latest 2022, 22H2, notice problem. Some games and apps might experience lower than expected performance or stuttering on Windows 11, 2022, I mean, 22H2. That's what Microsoft said at the time. Affected games and apps are inadvertently enabling GPU performance debugging features not meant to be used by consumers. While Microsoft didn't list the exact apps and games experiencing problems, the company did block <coughs> uh, the Windows 11 2022 update for systems with affected games and recommended people not upgrade. That safeguard was removed around a week ago, and now Microsoft has issued a full fix. If you're running the Windows 11 2022 update, you can check Windows update and find KB5020044 update preview that you can install. So you can install, if you have a problem, I remember you were talking about it some time ago, but problems with yeah there was some original concerns i didn't never heard yeah. more about it though that turned out to be substantial so they they do have that the thing that a preview of an update you know that's i'm saying what well, why preview if you, you have an update that fixes it you know put it out but yeah they did this all comes back to the idea of nothing is qc yeah you you are you are qc you are qc absolutely yeah. audit control yep Sounds yeah. like they don't know what the problem is. Exactly. They think they fixed it. They need people to test it. Yeah. And this is always the case. And for whatever reason, people, you know, rag windows on this. Like, oh, it should be easy to fix it. And it, it really kind of is a marvel and a wonder that you can piece together parts from vendors all over the world. And it actually works. Yeah, it works. It's a lot easier yeah. to do it on a Mac where you've got, you know. Everything every, is by it's, them. It's all by them. It's their yeah. processor. It's right. their RAM that they've certified. You can piece together any sort of chain mill computer and it will run. So it, it's, it, it, it's part of, part of that ecosystem. Yep. In another story about Windows 11, the snipping tool in Windows 11 will soon be updated to include the screen recording. Oh, so there we go. Meaning hey. when that'll be nice windows users won't have to rely on the xbox game bar or third-party tools just to record their screens yeah share x is the one i use well, windows so, 11 testers will start getting access to the updated snipping tool 
and the new record record option will allow you to record an entire screen or even a section that gets cropped. The update comes more than four years after Microsoft first introduced a new screenshot experience for Windows. Let me, let me take this opportunity to just talk about existing tools for stuff okay. like this. And start, we'll start with stuff that you don't need to install, right? Snipping tool, as they said, and the Xbox bar for video. The thing is, most people, if they want to share a video from their computer, right? It's not necessarily about what they're doing while they're doing it, and audio isn't an issue. Right. It's just a bunch of screens and the steps they are taking. First of all, there is a tool baked into Windows, I think since Windows 7, maybe even before, called the Steps Recorder. Mm -hmm. huh. Okay, so if you go to your Start menu, type Steps Recorder. What that does, it takes screenshots, but it takes a new screenshot every time you do something. So... You click with your mouse, it takes another screenshot. You, t you, uh, you type something with your keyboard, it takes another screenshot, and it writes down what you did. So you get in, at the end, you get like a complete flow of time of these are the steps that I did. For debugging, this is awesome. Oh, because it's awesome just to do a tutorial. That's exactly. Amazing. Yeah. Exactly. And that has been baked into Windows like 10, 15 years at least, right? Nobody uses it. <laughs> Nobody knows about it, which is sad. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, so there's that. Uh, uh, snipping tool is great. Xbox for video is okay-ish, the uh, Xbox uh, uh, toolbar. But there are great uh, on, um, um, free software available online. One of them is ShareX, and I, I swear by ShareX, it's, uh, it's a, an amazing tool. And it has an additional thing that it does very, very well. So once you take the screenshot or a screen grab, it also has some video support if you, if you want to add it to. Uh, once it completes that, you can, um, uh, you can tell it to, by, de by default, either directly upload that image uh, online and you get a short url so you can share very quickly you take a screenshot and you all you already have a url that you can share with a friend and they can see the image on the other end uh and another aspect is it can automatically go to the clipboard you know stuff and, and be transferable very easy so I, I found a steps recorder yeah right it's right there in the windows accessories you're right yeah this it's is right amazing. there yeah I yeah. didn't even know it was there. I know, I know. And well, so, every... now it's, so now something like this is going to be built into Windows 11. Uh, trust me, it's not going to be. It's going to be something like uh, video recording in OBS uh, uh, Studio, but very, very, very yeah. basic. Very, very limited in features, right? Yeah. The steps recorder is so much more usable. Than, than just recording video if you want to explain what you're doing. It's wonderful. It's, a, it's, it's start, stop, record. It's just simple. Three, yeah. start, record, stop, record, add comments. Yeah. Makes so much sense, right? Yeah. 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 It's a, I have to um, second Gal's point about ShareX. I've been using ShareX for years, and it is, it's one of the coolest pieces of software I have on my computer. It does literally everything. Good. It's got Free, a open source. As complex and as simple as you want it. Yeah, color picker. I mean, you could do. There's so many little add-ons built into ShareX, and the the um they have like almost like an automation, as Gall mentioned. After you do the screenshot, you can tell it to do a whole bunch of things: upload it to Google Drive, upload it to Dropbox, then copy it to my clipboard, or put it in this folder. There's so many look different processes that you can do after the fact. It's a uh, <coughs> it's very cool, and it's free, <laughs> and it's yep. open source. So I mean, it's really a no, uh, no, not going barrier. away. Yeah, no barrier to entry. Very little barrier to entry. All right, so here's a kind of kind of a funny one. Cyber criminals using hacking forms to buy software exploits and stolen login details keep falling for cons 
and are getting ripped off thousands of dollars at a time, a new analysis has revealed. And what's more, when the criminal complained that they are being scammed, they're also leaving a trail of breadcrumbs of their own personal information that could reveal their real-world identities to police and, investigation, and investigators. So now the scammers are scamming the scammers. That's appropriate. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That, there's no, there's no respect. cannibalism? <laughs> It's, 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 no respect about, among thieves. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. There isn't. You're absolutely correct. Um, this is good for pe people to know. Microsoft is launching a new communities feature for Microsoft Teams designed for consumers to use the best parts of Teams free of charge to create and organize groups. The new community feature will allow groups to use the calendar, meeting, and chat features of Teams. Features like group chat, calling, and file slash photo sharing are all supported. And groups will also be able to use a shared calendar, which includes Google Calendar integration, to organize community events. This new community integration is really aimed at groups like sports clubs or even a virtual community groups for small businesses and simple groups like a carpool for coworkers to organize transportation. Facebook, Reddit, Discord, WhatsApp, Twitter, and many other services already provide a variety of ways to organized groups online. So Microsoft is entering a crowded market, but it believes Teams has something different to offer. Now I never use Teams. Does that make sense don't, to you guys? Don't 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 bother. Okay. I get All forced right. to use Teams because of work. Same. But um it only works through work, when I try to use it personally, it, it breaks all the time and it drives me crazy. I'm sure it's user error, but I don't know. Well, I just use Discord. Um, I'm not on the bottom line for any of those tools. You use it where the people are, right? Where the people you want are. And yeah. chances are that if you want somebody on a casual setting and you want to communicate with them regularly today, I think there's only one answer, and that's Discord. Uh, um, any other forcing, any other tool at this point? I'm not saying uh, that it's because Discord is superior. I'm not even going there. It is superior, but I'm not even going there, right? Discord is where the people, the application will already be installed. People will already have a user, right? Uh, the resources are already taken by that application on the computer or on the phone and um, and just trying to force another system. If it's not for work, it's going to be hard, right? So stick with what works yeah. and what where people are. Um, John's got a question in the chat saying, uh, I have Spectrum Cable uh, and TV. I'm using the modem that they supplied several years ago, and they charge me $10 a month for it. Should I purchase a modem, and if so, suggestions? Should I purchase a modem? The answer normally is yes. However, now it is your equipment and your responsibility. So if it dies, you are on the hook to buy a new one, which, it, you know, any piece of equipment is like that. If, if the suggestion, then I just posted a link to the uh, Eris surfboard, um, which they sell, it's Doxis 3. Um, it supports, um, let's see, speed wise, um, it supports gigabit internet. Um, it's got a gigabit ethernet jack on it. Um, it supports, I'm trying to, they used to show the megabits. I don't think uh, it doesn't really matter. 3 will support yeah, gigabit. Bandwidth, yeah, locally it will uh, do it, but I think it's good up to I can't remember something like 
six something in sound. Well, no, it'll but do more than okay. that, but it, but the modem has to support those speeds. So yeah, up to um, eight hundred megabits uh, cable internet. It's on there the f- fourth I s- image. That. Yeah. So um, even if you have, which you probably don't have, a spectrum gigabit, you probably have right. three or four or five hundred megabits. So then this will do everything you need. It's on sale right now. It's on. It's seventy five dollars. It's twenty five percent off. Um, so. If you're going to get one, this is what I would get. Uh, Motorola also makes one called. Um, they've got a. They the Motorola used to be the Motorola Surfboard. Then Aris mm-hmm. bought it. Now it's the Aris Surfboard, and Motorola makes their own modems now. A, a, again, under a different brand name. Um, these are. This is also on sale. I'm gonna throw this in the the chat too. I've used the Surfboard. You still use a Surfboard, correct? The modem, or Spectrum. Uh, I don't have Spectrum. Oh, you don't have Spectrum. You used to use the Motorola yeah. surfboard. Um, I use it. Um, I think my parents still have one at home. Um, and I've been very happy with it. Yeah, so it, that's it, what it I works. Would. 75 if, bucks. You're on the hook for it. So yeah. it pays itself off in seven and a half months. Um, but just be under the mindset that if it dies at any point, you're going to have to shell out yep. for it. But, John, I would highly recommend you. And, and, it, you, uh, and, and not, not only that, Nick, um, if you don't have the 500 megabits, if you have like 100 or 200, mm-hmm. look in the, uh, the Facebook uh, Facebook Marketplace market yeah. or used one. Yeah, true. Because a lot of people right. needed to upgrade. Yeah. I and, would uh, I would definitely, if I'm going to buy a third-party modem, I'm getting a surfboard, either a Motorola or an Aeris yeah. surfboard. That's what I would get. But, I wouldn't get anything but else. But I would say I would highly recommend looking for second-hand ones. Yeah. People yeah. are switching ISPs all yeah. the time, yeah. and those who buy it, they need to sell it, and then it's not seventy dollars. Then it's twenty, thirty dollars, right? Uh, and which makes it a much easier uh, 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 frog to fl- to swallow. So, yeah, that's so, what I did when I was in Spectrum. So, it's, uh, I just find somebody somebody who sold it for fifteen bucks, and yeah, I'm uh, looking it reduced uh, my my monthly fee. I'm looking right now. This my Facebook Marketplace is set to Wilmington. Um, but somebody, there's a, there's one of them that's on sale here for $20, another right. one for 40, another one for 50. Um, so yeah, that definitely John search it, for Doxis three, and that should yeah. set you on the right path. Find, find what they're selling on Facebook, grab the model number, put it on Amazon or eBay or something. So you can see the specs of the device and, uh, and then yeah, pick it up. Highly recommend. And you'll probably get better. There's been cases where you get better speeds and oh, better yeah. performance with those modems as well, especially as John said, I've had it for years. So you might have an yeah. older Doxis modem and uh, yeah, it pays for itself. Very and, we, and we can even take it farther, John, if you're in an area where you do have AT&T and Google Fiber and all that, you may find out that switching is going to save you a lot of money. You have to think about it and think about TV and all that, but just look, look, look at it. If, if, yeah, if you have a Spectrum TV, we used to. Um, it's kind of hard to to break away, but it's 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 possible. But yeah, get get yourself one of those. I mean, for to buy a modem for fifteen, twenty bucks, that that that's okay. That's is nothing just retired with. just retired my tp link cable modem oh. i had a i had a uh motorola backup one but it wasn't it was an older one it wasn't fast enough when i upgraded to tp link yeah. and i've had that in service for oh five years so yeah. john brings up a point john these are just modems so you do you have a if you do you have a separate router or are you using the OB, motor OB motor router combo from spectrum because if that's the case then you not only need the modem right you will need also a need a router which you can get routers very very cheaply yeah. um and i still would recommend it even if that's the case so instead of paying it off in seven months it might take a year to pay it off um but long term you'll get better performance most likely better performance and um you can buy a, a tp link ax router for less than a hundred dollars So what is it, John? Do you have do you have a modem and a router, or do you have one unit that's the modem router? 
Here's a that's uh that's a good. Here's Amazon's uh source, Amazon's choice for TP Link routers. They're AC twelve hundred, which is the Archer A fifty four. It's thirty one dollars. Yeah. So you can get a router and a modem. Well, if you buy the modem on used on Facebook, you can do it for probably fifty bucks. Um, so. Yep, there's a lot of uh, good hardware out there in the used market because people keep on upgrading. Facebook Marketplace really is a... Um, and you can look at Craigslist, too. I mean, yeah, you, you're seeing a lot less. But there's yeah. other apps, too, OfferUp and some of these other things. Facebook Marketplace is really, really cool if you've never yep. used it. There's a lot of really cool stuff mm -hmm. on there. He says, my modem is a router. Okay. okay. But I also have a Wi-Fi router. Okay, then perfect, John. Then you're good to go. So instead of using the mo, you, he's, no, so he's using it in bridge. You can't. That, 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 you can. You can double NAT. And, yeah, um, but I don't. Think but so, so, John, if you already have a router, uh, then you all you need is the modem, yep. and you'll probably have to reconfigure your router um, to talk with the modem. Yep. But once you do that, you'll be good to go. And the the cool thing about these modems is the ISPs will help you set them up. They actually have to yeah, in some cases. They do. So it's not like you buy it and then you're out on your own. They'll they'll help you set it up and then um one thing to look at would be to make sure it's on the, the approved list for your provider. Yes, and the the Aries or the Motorola surfboards well, they are, are they all are spectrum also Comcast. on the spectrum list. Yeah. So I'm looking here at a Motorola 16 by 4 uh modem is just $70. Yeah. I don't know. Don't know. You know if you need sixteen channels. Uh, that that's that's a a mid. That's in the middle. That's good. Yeah. I mean, get it. If you want, if if you want to spend well, less a, money than they have the one with the eight, they've got a twenty four by eight for six for seventy dollars. Yeah, but you see, that's getting up there. Yeah, well, depends. Yeah. All right. We can continue it later. But are you ready for? Uh, Special? Specials? Absolutely. So as we approach the uh, Christmas holiday, uh, you know, they always, they're always worried that Santa Claus is, is, uh, is watching you. So he knows when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good because he, uh, he hacked the NSA. And they, of course, got, <laughs> have got all of your data and information. So he's using that. And then I uh, saw, saw this, uh, this, this nice dog here, Amnon who um, was there from tech support to eat the uh, cookies. So instead of clearing them in your browser, you can send a dog to do that. Hilarious. That's, All right. that's interesting. I mean, I, I, I got to mention this on uh, America's favorite video, funniest uh, AFD, video. Yeah. Uh, they, there was a little girl. She was maybe two or three years old, something like that, and went to uh, Santa, or talking to Santa, and he says, so were you a good girl or bad? She said, we're not going to talk about that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully her data isn't being tracked by the federal government. All right. Um, kind of a, 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 I was mindful on specials this week. A lot of stuff is available at uh, Best Buy or Target, or at least as of yesterday, you could purchase via Amazon and it would show up in time for Christmas. So this first one takes us to Best Buy. Um, I have been a big fan of Lenovo laptops over the past couple of years. Spence picked one up a couple of weeks ago. Um, they seem to be at this point, one of the better middle tier brands of laptops. Here is their IdeaPad 3i. It does have a last gen processor. So it's got a Core i3 11, uh, 1115G4, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 256 gigabyte SSD, which is likely hmm. an NVMe drive. Um, it's normally $500. It's on sale for $279. This is them trying to clear out their uh, last generation. But since it's a 15.6 inch, it's got a full numpad on it. This is a very capable computer uh, for the price. And you it's can, Windows 11. It is Windows 11. You can uh, pick it up in store. Uh, I, for example, it's ready at the Durham South Point Best Buy, or you can get it shipped. They say it'll ship from the store. So this one says it can be here by Tuesday. Um, so you'll check that out over at Best Buy. Next up takes us uh, to look at a television. Here's a Westinghouse which is Best Buy's brand of, um, they have Insignia and Westinghouse. This is a 55-inch 4K Roku Smart TV. 
Um, it comes with, as I mentioned, the Roku built right into it, so you don't have to worry about a, a separate device. In terms of uh, ports on this guy, it's got uh, three HDMI ports, um, so you can get a couple of devices connected, but you don't have to burn one with uh, connecting a smart TV device. Normally, $439, it's on sale for $249, save $190 on that. Next up, this says it will arrive before Christmas. Uh, it supposedly will ship to Wilmington by Thursday. Uh, is the Tozo, T-O-Z-O, Power Delivery Fast Charge 20,000 milliamp hour power bank. I picked this one up. It was kind of unique because it has a screen on it. You know, I don't typically see them with screens. They've got little LED indicators with what the charge is. But this one actually has a screen that will tell you not only the percentage, but what it's delivering, whether it's using uh, delivering fast charge or not. So if you're somebody that is, you know, wants a little bit more um, info, info, the great word to use, a little bit more info on uh, your power bank, this is a, a good device to do it. This will charge an iPad two times, a Samsung, uh, the, the latest Samsung phone four times, and the iPhone uh, five times. So it's not the largest power bank in the world, but uh, you'll get some good charging with it, and you can see your percentage. Plus, it Nick, you can build an array of these and power your house. Th there you go. Yeah, for only uh, $29. Actually, no, it's cheaper than that. It's um, it's $14.99. Oh. $14 yeah, there's, a, there's an automatic coupon code when you add it to your cart. So, uh, yeah, for $15, bucks, you are absolutely correct, Spence. You can uh, power your whole house. Damn. So uh, let us know. <laughs> um, next up takes us to Target where you'll find, uh, this is a kind of a cool Christmas gift last minute, uh, the Fujifilm Mini 11 Holiday Bundle. This is a instant camera, thermal camera um, Polaroid for, you know, that's the, the traditional term that you would use for it, a Polaroid camera. So this is a, a, a kind of a Christmas bundle kit. It comes with the camera. It comes with a pack of instant mini 10-sheet film comes with a uh, little scrapbook, a lanyard, and some other little gadgets as well. Um, so great for, they, they say here, great for teenagers and stuff like that. It's normally $86. You can get it for $69.99, save $17 or 20% over at Target. Next up takes us to Amazon. Now, this one is where it does not arrive till after Christmas. After Christmas. This is not expected to arrive until mid-January. So this is not a, a Christmas gift, but it's still a really good deal on a, a keyboard mouse combo. This is the Asus Tough Gaming brand. This is their RGB keyboard, um, which has got the fold numpad on it uh, that uses their Aura Sync. So it's full RGB compatible. It's got um, a couple of um, extra buttons on it as well that you can map and program. And then it also comes with their M3 lightweight mouse, which is wired. It's USB, which has got controllable DPI plus two soft buttons on either side of it. This is normally a $70 combo, which is Asus tough stuff is pretty good. You can find it for just $39. So if uh, in the new year looking for a new keyboard and mouse combo, order it now. Uh, Amazon says January the 10th, it will, uh, it will be there. So Check that out at Amazon. Next up, this is uh, this one. You'll be um, you'll be threading the needle with this one. Delivery expected by Friday, December the twenty third. But you always need batteries for for Christmas Day. So here we've got a, a sale on Energizer batteries. This is a thirty two pack of uh, Energizer long lasting alkaline batteries. Normally on sale for twenty five dollars, or normally uh, list price twenty five dollars. On sale for sixteen thirty seven. That comes out to fifty one cents per battery. Uh, you can uh, check that out over. That's at, for the double A's. That's for the double A's. Correct. Check that out over at Amazon. Next up, if anybody's looking for a Christmas gift for me, uh, here is the Bev by Black and Decker. Check this guy out. So this is like a Keurig, but for alcohol. So you <laughs> set this thing up and you. Put your bottles of alcohol, uh, whiskeys, tequilas, vodkas, whatever it might be, you connect it to this thing permanently. And it's got um, six spouts for you to connect these cocktails to. And then you buy the pods that, do, that have the um, flavoring minus the alcohol. So if you're doing a, 
a whiskey sour. It's got all of the flavoring minus the whiskey. And then you put it in there. You scan the barcode. You te- tell it tell it what you want, and it will make the perfect beverage, either a shot or a full drink. It will shake it. It's got the whole thing going on here. This is by Black & Decker, which I thought was kind of interesting, but this is their Bev. It's normally two hundred, uh, normally three hundred dollars. You can get it for just two hundred bucks over at uh, Amazon. It does not appear that it is going to arrive by Christmas, so maybe, um, maybe a late Christmas uh, gift. You can blame shipping delays, or you can blame Joe Biden if it comes late. Uh, check that out over at Amazon. Next up, a um, little bit of a story with this one. I was chatting with my father last week. And uh, he was saying, or this week, and he was saying that his Roku Express that they have in the basement uh, was having some flaky Wi-Fi. So the option is either get a Roku Ultra that has Ethernet, or um, or I thought that was the only option. Well, it turns out these Roku Expresses, as well as the Amazon Fire TVs and the Chromecasts that are powered via micro USB, you can actually get an Ethernet adapter for these things and plug in ethernet a wired a wired ethernet so you green which makes a whole bunch of cool products i have an hdmi switch from them and a couple of other the usb hub they make an ethernet adapter that's compatible with the fire tv stick 4k the max light chromecast the um uh roku express 4k a google home mini so the smart speaker uh and a bunch of other devices and the way that it works is you plug in the micro USB to your device, Roku Fire TV Chromecast, plug Ethernet into the Ethernet adapter, and then uh, just connect it to 5 volts uh, USB. And then it passes through power from this device to the, to the Roku or the Amazon t- uh, stick. And then you not only get power, but then you also get Ethernet. So I bought this for them. It'll uh, be there sometime this week. Um, I'm going to be back home in New York Wednesday, so I'll test it out and uh, report back next week. It's on sale, though. It's normally $20. You can get it for just 17 bucks. So instead of shelling out 70 or $80 on a Roku Ultra, you can get a Roku Express for $15 or $20 and then slap Ethernet on it. There is another interesting option related to this. It's a different manufacturer, but it, it is a you USB sure Ethernet adapter. Ethernet with USB ports on it, and you use their adapter. Cable. Show it. Show it again. Sorry. Here's here's the actual. It, this is a Ethernet adapter with three USB ports on it, mm-hmm. and the Ethernet. But it comes with a splitter cable for the micro USB. That's oh. what you what you plug this in, and you can add more memory now oh, to okay. your device. Yeah, which is I I did this and it works. Do you did the Ethernet uh, and it worked? Yes. Oh, and this works with Windows too. You can plug this into any Windows laptop, yeah. and you have an inter- internet port. Oh, that's very a cool. Okay, port. great. Avu, weird name, Avu Paul, A V U A U V P I P A L. Very cool. Link. But yeah, similar idea. It's just this is great for solving wireless. I uh, I didn't even. Know. It's this is really great to connect a keyboard as well. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, I didn't realize that these devices, because the devices have to support Ethernet over USB, and I didn't realize any of yeah. them supported it. I assumed that they would want you to shell out for the Ultra that has an Ethernet jack. But it seems like Roku, um, Amazon, and Google all seem to think that this is standard. So. Yeah, and don't be scared about the power, you know, uh, USB power. You put it right on the TV on the USB. Well, port. depends on your TV. Some TV, some TVs My, don't give you enough uh, oh, voltage. Okay. Um, but either way, the Roku Express is powered via USB anyway, so it, yeah, it really doesn't matter. Use the same power brick. You just put this guy in between. Yeah, same power brick works. So I'll uh, I'll report back next week on uh, how that okay. works for them. Next up, um, this will this if you buy, if you get two day shipping, this will be here by Christmas. This is over at Woot, which is uh, through Amazon. This is the Nex N E X gadget. 15 watt four in one wireless charging station. So, this will work with uh, this is for uh, Apple devices. This will charge your iPhone or your Android phone, but specifically your iPhone, your Apple Pencil, if you have an iPad and use the Apple Pencil. It will also charge your Apple Watch and your AirPods. So, if you're all in on the uh, Apple ecosystem and you've got some of these gadgets, 
instead of having a bunch of uh, USB cords running all over your nightstand or your desk, you pick up this guy and uh, you can get everything done um, directly with, with one device here. This is normally $26. It's on clearance, 38% off. Pick it up for $15.99. You might have to pay a little extra for shipping. Check that out over at Woot. Next up, uh, speaking of getting things in stock, um, maybe you've procrastinated and now you have to spend more on a gift than you might have wanted to. Well, here you go. Here's the At Legends Ultimate Home Arcade with Special Bonus. I'd also more, be more than happy for somebody to buy me one of these as well. It's uh, on sale for $469. This is normally a $600 unit. And this is the creme de la creme of uh, home arcades at this point. At the uh, at Games Legends Ultimate is the top tier device. Um, this thing's got so much functionality. Uh, it's got Wi-Fi so that you can play games online. It's got a whole game marketplace. Plus, you can yeah, you'd sideload got, it's games. It's got Space Invaders. That's what's important. It does have Space Invaders. Um, it's got. I don't know how many. I don't know how many games that this default one comes with. Because I mean, there's like a um, 300 games built in, including Centipede wow. and Space Invaders plus Tetris. Yeah. So that plus you can buy games stream games um if you've never played on one of these things it's a really really cool device and you can mod the hell out of it and put you can put thousands of games on this thing and it looks like two people can play on it it. does have two people correct yeah Yeah, so it's got co-op in it as well um still expensive at 469 but it's 100 bucks off this is at sam's club though so uh you have to have be a sam's club member to get it but you could presumably pick it up sometime this week and and have it wrapped up for uh for christmas Next up takes us to a website um, that I've never used before, but it is a reputable website called Focus Camera. They're a a camera retailer, but they are selling the Google Nest wired smart security uh, doorbell and camera. The Nest is normally $120 and they've running a, uh, they've got a discount code that you'll find at the Slick Deals link to get this device for just 80 bucks. So you're saving $40 on it. Um, you can get the free standard shipping says it'll be here Christmas Eve. Um, but you can pay for additional shipping and get it earlier than that if need be. Um, so instead of spending $120, you spend 79 and get the Google Nest, uh, doorbell security camera. Check that out over at, um, focuscamera.com. Amnon, I picked this out specifically for you. Your your car your truck is cool and all, but it doesn't have RGB lights built into it. So here is the Govi RGB LED light strip. And this is this is hot. This is a real hot item. So you can charge this thing. You uh, plug this thing in via 12 volt DC, so you can power it via your cigarette lighter, or you can wire it into your car. And uh, it comes with four individual strips. That you can put under your uh, under the the seat, uh, either under the seat or where your legs go, and um, you've got light controls on it. It will dance along to the music, so it's got a speaker, so it will listen to the music. Thirty two colors, speed control, music mode. This is this is the full package right here for just seven dollars and thirty cents. And you can put it under the car too. You absolutely well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess you drill a hole through your uh, side panel, you probably can put it under the car. So this takes any crappy old car like mine and makes it really cool. Uh for just seven dollars and thirty cents. Yeah. So <laughs> check this out over at Amazon. It looks like a joke. It's got twelve thousand reviews and the average Amazon star is four point four. Wow. So yeah. It's a cheap LED strip, but yeah. people seem to like it. So uh you're rocking the PT Cruiser. Maybe this is the uh, this is the the go to for that. Next up, um, I'm a big fan of Logitech peripherals. I have a Logitech mouse and a Logitech keyboard. It's my go to. Here is the wired Logitech G502 Hero. This is their high performance gaming mouse. It supports DPI up to twenty five thousand six hundred. Um, for for its DPI, it's got adjustable weights, so you put little uh, they look like little uh, button cell batteries that are the weight. So you can adjust the weight depending on how you want it to be uh, set up. It's got, um, it's not, R- yeah, it is. It is RGB light built into it as well. Um, plus, it's got a couple of programmable G buttons, which is what Logitech calls their programmable buttons. 
uh, plus onboard memory. So you can program the mouse and then take it to another computer and it will save all of the settings. This is normally an $80 mouse. This is, again, their high-end mouse. Get it for just $29.99. This will not arrive until after Christmas as well, so uh, be advised of that. But for $29, this is a phenomenal deal on a really wow. great device. Next up, the Kohler Numi 2.0 Intelligent Smart Toilet. Now, I will note this is available for pre-order right now for the low, low price of $15,400. You can get the, you can pre-order this and have it ready to go. Some of the features that this uh, device supports, completely voice controlled. So you ask wow. Kohler to open the lid. You ask Kohler to close the lid. You ask Kohler to flush an eco flush, turn on the bodet, turn on the heated seat. This will do all of it, so you never have to touch it, and it does uh, connect with the Amazon A word as well. Wipe. Um, <laughs> and I'm, I'm not. I can't <laughs> confirm or deny whether it will do the wiping functionality for you. And this is what you're getting for all of us, right, Nick? We're yeah, this is a. Uh, yeah, so it's gonna Very be nice. like a, it's gonna be like Christmas story where the guy comes and knocks on the door and uh, with he's got his <laughs> fragile box that he wheels in. This is what you're gonna find from uh, DHL is gonna deliver it. Um, it's a anyway. weird looking toilet. It's got no pedestal or anything. It's all flat. So you, I don't, you're, it's just kind of a weird looking device. It's got an RGB light built into it. So that's cool. You can, you can uh, adjust the color. <laughs> it's got a deodorizer built into it. So, you know, for situations that might unfold, um, full UV sanitation, hands-free connects with Amazon um, this is a go-to for anybody that's looking to piss away money. Um, the Kohler, <laughs> which oh. by the way, Kohler makes good stuff. Oh. Yeah. So, My toilet is a Kohler. Exactly. Kohler makes great stuff. The Kohler Numi, N-U-M-I 2.0 Intelligent Smart Toilet, $15,400. Uh, how, how much is the dumb version of this? <laughs> I... I, I <laughs> Kohler is not going to even attempt with us peasants, Spence, that can't afford... Numi, the Numi 1.0. What's, what's that going for? <laughs> You know, that's a great question. I didn't look up to see if they made a 1.0. Let, uh, let me see if they sell a 1.0. What, what were the results of 1.0? <laughs> Actually, okay, so they do <laughs> sell a 1.0. It it's, right, right. it's just called the Numi. It's now discontinued. Um, let me see if... I don't know if I can view a price because it's... Yeah. Uh, okay. So the Numi 1.0 is only sixty five hundred dollars. Oh, so steal. It, it is a steal. <laughs> um, this one is got. Listen to this. Listen to the features on this one. Stream music wirelessly with any Bluetooth enabled device, so you can feel the bass <laughs> on your oh ass as you're sitting God. on the toilet. Um, Julio Iglesias Mataha. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, have there been Have there been studies to say what music and colors? <laughs> I'm. There's enough m fake money going around, Spence, that I'm sure somebody has studied this. You can go to the bathroom in 4D, and that was yeah, that yeah, so literally four cool. dimension. Um, yeah, this thing is. Uh, I, oh. I, I don't even know. It, this thing's got 13 reviews on on Home Depot. Now I, I don't know if Home Depot does verified reviews, um, but. Literally, the first question is: Anyone who spends ten thousand on this toilet needs to reassess their value system. If it doesn't have flashing LED lights, yeah. so I can have a party while I poop. Then it's not this one guy it. says. So this guy actually owns one. He says the trap design is poor. The toilet beeps instead of flushes. Um, the blue and the Bluetooth doesn't add value. That was left ju <laughs> uh, ju June the third of this of this year. Um, Interesting. Yeah. yeah. See, Katie, you should have waited with uh, redoing your bathroom. Yeah, if only I had fifteen thousand dollars to get. Yeah. Well, this one's only six thousand. Oh no, it's discontinued. I can't. Now you can one. buy it at Home Depot. I'll just post it. I'll just I'll post it. I'll post the link in chat. Oh. So, how much, um, at, <laughs> how much is it at Costco? Uh, no, they don't sell it at Costco, but Costco does have a deal on toilet paper. You can get uh eighty <laughs> rolls of toilet paper for about thirty five dollars. Um, that's available oh. in store or online as well. And you so, can prepare uh, for the coming shortages again. Yes, coming. that is uh, <laughs> that is specials for this uh, final uh, show before Christmas. For next week, and, and unless anybody's got a different thought, which I encourage, um, I was planning on doing 
instead of specials on Christmas Day, which is kind of weird. Um, taking a look at some upcoming devices for 23 and 24, some kind of newer technology that that maybe maybe has been announced and is expected to come out. But I'm open to suggestions Pro- if there's something for else. You. Yeah, yeah, maybe some, and not gimmicky stuff, like actual technology that, that's coming out. Um, but if anybody's got a different suggestion, um, let, let us know. You can, I think you can send an email through the website, yeah. and it'll go to all of the hosts. Um, right. So no specials next week. We'll be back. Uh, let's see. That'll put us back uh, the first, first. Of, first of the year. Uh, we'll be back with um, specials uh, on our normal rotation. So that'll do it. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and now you. let me know if you buy the toilet. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see. Um. It, this is uh interesting for those, especially those that remember. Custom-made laptop. So Dell continues tinkering with what it hopes to be a repairable laptop like the framework laptop. Last year, it showed off Concept Luna, a clamshell designed to easily disassemble for easy repairs. For easy repairs, upgrades, and harvested components. This year, Dell showed the press and updated concept Luna that could support more power while being even simpler to dismantle. The vendor is also exploring how to automate the process from assembly to parts diagnosis. Bottom line, it's a, it's a, it's a laptop that you can work on, replace parts. What was the brand of it? Dell. Oh, Dell. Yeah, there's Del a couple. Luna. There's a couple of other groups. There's a company called Framework. Yeah, um, that's yeah, what yeah, it was they saying. They talked about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was reading. It's just there. like it. Yeah. So Framework, and then there's another one. Um, I just watched a YouTube video on it the other day. Yeah, um, in the early early days of laptops back in the late eighties, mid eighties. I don't remember. We used to build them from parts. Mm. You would get the clamshell and you would put the hard drive in there and you, you know, I mean, it's, it was, uh, it was a very heavy laptop, <laughs> but, uh, they weren't called laptops, but yeah, yeah, they were called portable computers. No, these are the, uh, the these are the next stuff that is portable computer. Yeah. <laughs> Luggables. Luggable. Oh, uh, yeah. So it's, um, so framework is what we talked about. That's just a random third party right. that's making it. Dell's got one. HP has got a line of these as well. Uh, oh. The G series, um, the HP Elite Book 845G is completely repairable, and they sell you the modules. So you can buy a new Wi-Fi module, buy a new camera module, do all of this stuff. So yep. now, to be fair, this HP one is two thousand dollars to start. Right? <laughs> these are the higher end. It's the only way it makes sense. You can't sell a laptop for three hundred dollars and then make it. Why? Framework doesn't sell very expensive you're right. laptops. They're more higher end. Right. Now. Yeah. Like you're not going to get and your baseline Lenovo. And that I just like doesn't what makes sense. I like what this one says harvested component. So that means you can get it from another. It doesn't have to be something that's yeah. built for, but of course, not a camera. Yeah. Uh, it has to be some, one of the other components. Uh, why not a camera? I mean, eventually well, everything can be that way. Eventually, I think yeah. the, the key is there is interest. I can't say it's going to be a complete shift, but there's definitely interest and in, in understanding that laptops are the, uh, the new norm, right? If we came from a desktop, um, uh, mostly desktop era of computing, when we're talking about desktop computing today is first and foremost a laptop. And so these need to be a lot more flexible. And the company, a company like Framework, uh, which is, they're not the only one, but they are definitely leading the conversation right now around that, which is interesting. Uh, 
because they have been, it's not that there weren't any modular laptops before. Mm -hmm. It's just there's it's the first time that they brought a laptop that you would actually want to use. It's not heavier. It's not clunkier. It looks exactly like an, you know, like an, uh, a, a, a very nice Dell or a very nice Mac, right? It's, it looks good. It's comfortable oh, to it use. And, looks great. And, and it's priced reasonably. Yeah, and that's, so, the point. that's the bottom right. line. It has to be priced reasonably. And not only is it priced reasonably, they have a commitment of supporting the framework that you bought, right? For an extended uh, period of time, they're talking about uh, X years where they're going to support whatever they came out with, right? So, mm -hmm. and they're going to produce the uh, um, the replacement parts, and right. So, it's this um, when when a player like that comes into into the playground, right, and they are generating positive focus. It's great that it's pulling uh, Dell and HP into it and, and Lenovo into it. That's, that's it's a win yeah, it's, for us. It's, it's great. It's great. I mean, there's a lot of laptops that are being thrown away because people don't want to have to, to pay the, the manufacturers an arm and a leg to replace right. a part inside. Yeah. There's really... It would be nice if they could be repaired. Absolutely. Right. I'm watching the I'm watching a video of them. The, the, when you go to their website, it just shows you a video of somebody taking the thing apart, just popping the cover off. Every yeah. a couple of screws comes apart. Everything comes off as a module. There's yeah. no you don't need a special tool to you know to break all the little connections around the keyboard and all that stuff. It's great. Not yeah, only that, they did something very unique. Every module there. Right, it has a, a QR code, so you immediately get to the page with the specs on it. Right, if you need yeah. to replace it, mm -hmm. right, and so and with the instructions of what to do, it's like they have um, they have taken they the commitment it. of making this really, really uh, um, nice, making sense. Yeah, yeah, that's very nice. Absolutely. All right, and Apple is developing a 15 and a half inch MacBook Air. Which will never be repairable. <laughs> that could launch in the spring of 2023, according to display analyst Ross Young. In a tweet shared with super followers, what is super followers? I think they're ones that uh, pay to follow. Oh. He like, said, like, subscribe. That production on panels designed for the MacBook Air will start in the first quarter of 2023. A 15 and a half inch MacBook Air will be sized between the 14 and 16 inches, really. And it will be the largest MacBook Air to date. The current model measures in at 13.6 inches. So that's uh, for for you, you know, Apple uh, fanboys. That's perfect. You got something to look forward to. <laughs> now here's some disturbing piece of news. TikTok recommends self harm and eating disorder content to some users within minutes of joining the platform. According to a new report published Wednesday by the Center for Countering Digital Hate, the new study had researchers set up TikTok accounts posing as a 13-year-old user interested in content about body image and mental health. It found that within the as few as 2.6 minutes after joining the app, TikTok algorithm recommended suicidal content. The report shows that eating disorder content was recommended within the first or as few as eight minutes. I don't understand why they would do that. Why they would? Why, uh -huh. I mean, this is where 
I'm, and and I'm not. On first of all, uh, I call bullshit. I don't I mean, know. I'm not saying I'm not saying it didn't happen, right? I'm saying whoever's reporting is trying to cause Sensational. you to feel something I, no, instead of test. I right. understand, but my point here is. Somebody is somebody did something stupid, right? Or yeah. and and other people are seeing it. TikTok has a tendency of pushing new content, very new content to very new users, right? That's the way you can get um, uh, hundreds, maybe thousands of views if you just joined and posted something. This is a way to incentivize. Uh, um, uh, newcomers basically onto the platform, right? And so, uh, in this particular case, it sounds like there's some new content, uh, questionable. TikTok, by the way, they are notorious in the way they are monitoring and taking down content as well as they are pushing content, right? Uh, more than probably more harsh than anything YouTube or Twitter did before. So, when when there are trigger words, when there is uh, uh, reporting about it, the platform usually takes things that they don't want to show there very very quickly. So I'm not I'm not defending the platform, uh, but I am uh, uh, naysaying the reporter. Right? It's not I've, the I fact might, that might, that came yeah. right. The fact that that came up that might be true but as long as you choose to you know disregard uh and and not follow that content it probably won't show up again that's correct so, but my my point here okay so do you believe that they have such content on their platform i believe that content exists anywhere in facebook in youtube in, in i don't uh, know Instagram. that's what i'm wondering it's Does probably it? yeah it's it's everywhere yeah. because it, it um, users talk, users talk right. about their experience. Yeah, Gaul's right Go that that TikTok um, is very adamant about banning um, material they don't like. The problem is is that there's so many users and they post it so fast that it's right. like literally impossible for them to get it right away. They're pretty quick. I mean, I've up uploaded stuff that I didn't realize was against their TOS. Like I was talking about onion browser or whatever that thing that gall showed me and immediately they they were like nope we can't talk about that because i don't know work around whatever anyways um but yeah, because they're chinese and they cannot allow uh people to bypass the chinese uh firewall <laughs> the they chinese are firewall, bound yeah. by government <laughs> rules not to advertise that so yeah but the, also the reporter's data is skewed because while he's trying to see if TikTok will do this thing, it doesn't even have to be TikTok. You can you'll, you can find this on Facebook or anywhere. It, it it's the data is going to be skewed because he's he's looking for it without directly typing it in. So the algorithm doesn't know what's good or bad. It's just it it shares things Learning. that other uh, yeah it learns and it shares things that other users like because they're like okay well you like this thing and and you follow this person this person likes that thing too so maybe you'll like what that person likes like that's the algorithm of the thing i'll so, tell you one thing that i find you 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 mentioned something katie so precise the uh um the reporting is specific yep to it's the specific. reporter yep yeah i mean it's always like that no 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 what i yeah. mean is that person will get that content always it's about the person oh. watching the content more than the people producing it uh john in the in the chat says how can any platform verify the age of a user i was always wondering about this i mean there's effectively no no, no, no. there's no. no way well there is an effective way to do it and it requires providing a form of identification right but, but then you get a yeah. fake one yeah y Thing. Yeah, but I mean, how many people, you get a fake ID to go into a bar, are you going to get a fake ID yeah. to join TikTok? I don't know. Every time, I, every time I join a website, it always asks for your birthday, and you can put whatever year you want. The only right. time that bit me in the butt is uh, when I was young. So, uh, I don't know, it was like a 10 or 11, and I was joining a website, and I put in a fake year. And then at one point, um, the, the website had to do like a clear to check that the users were 
13 or older. And so it asked to confirm your birthday. And I don't remember what the date I put in. So <laughs> oh, I didn't that count. <laughs> so that That's was why you use a password vault. I no, definitely. This- God, this was I back in the use, 90s. <laughs> I definitely use fake birthdays uh, on most sites that I have zero interest of them knowing who am I, who I am. And if I'm not going to uh, transact with, uh, with, payment, uh, uh, with any payment method, there is no need for them to know more about me, right? I use fake names. It, yes. Is it against the EULA? Yes. I break the user agreement every single time. Sorry about that, internet. I just, I would rather that you know less about me. Also, and that's fine. It makes that's, sense. That, it fine. makes sense. With the credit cards too, it's like you, you can put in whatever credit card, like you, you can grab your parents, you can get your own. I, I just like you when you put in the information, the information just has to match what the card is. So I don't know. You, It's, I don't know, making it harder to do things, but there's ways to get around it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey said in a blog post on Tuesday that he will give a grant of $1 million per year to encrypted messaging app Signal. The first in a series of grants he planned to make to support Open internet development. Social media should not be owned by a single company or group of companies and needs to be resilient to corporate and government influences, he wrote on a, on a post. Something changed him. Uh, no, really. On a That's review, a newsletter service owned by Twitter, that, uh, the, the, he, he had uh, his article in a newsletter that is owned by Twitter. It's interesting. I mean, it's it's nice that he's doing it, but uh, look, he all, he always was an advocate of that. It's not huh? look. I, I uh, there is this tendency, especially in tech news, to uh, v- uh, villainize people, right? You can't villainize uh, him Twitter now for that. Twitter is not one person. Twitter, even, even now with Elon Musk at the head, Twitter is not one person. Right. right. And it was never Jack Dorsey. Jack Dorsey was part of it. Well, right? the buck stops there. Well, but yes and no. Look, he, he, he wanted out. He yeah. sold the company. Yeah. He was trying to sell the company for a while. Right? So, always trying to align like as if this is a a, a a one-to-one representation of the person come on people huh? we're smarter than that if we would have sat down with the person face to face and had a an actual conversation right we'll know more about the person than how the company was run so yeah so we never knew that he was doing it every year was giving money to to, I don't uh, think it was. I don't think it was uh, hush hush or something. I don't know if I knew by name, but uh, Signal uh, has been known uh, no, no, to. Yeah, Signal runs on uh, on uh, on um, uh, donations, and those donations are public. Yeah. Uh, right. So, like, I don't know if if who gave, but you see the uh, the tax reports. You can you can access them. So. All right. Next thing is YouTube has announced a plan to crack down on spam and abusive content in comments and live stream chats. Of course, YouTube will be doing this with bots, which will now have the power to issue timeouts to users and instantly remove comments that are deemed abusive. YouTube uh, post says. We've been working on improving our automated detection systems and machine learning models to identify and remove spam. In fact, we've removed over 1.1 billion spammy comments in the first six months of 2022. We've improved our spam bot detection to keep bots out out of live chat. The bots are keeping the bots the bots out. I mean, 
again, it's cannibalism. You're, you're talking about the, the spammers going after spammers or bots going after bots. <laughs> Soon there, there's going to be AI systems like going after other AI systems. Yeah, of course. I'm sure there already are. And there's there's technical IT warfare. So yeah. And then we're just all, all going to be playing video games with like real things. <laughs> and here is something to think about too. Federal prosecutors have charged six people for allegedly operating websites that launched millions of powerful distributed denial of service attacks on a wide array of victims on behalf of millions of paying customers. The sites promoted themselves as booter or stressor services designed to test the bandwidth and performance of customers' networks. Prosecutors said in court papers that the service services were used to direct massive amounts of junk traffic at third-party websites and internet connections customers wanted to take down or seriously constrain. Victims included educational institutions, government agencies, gaming platforms, and millions of individuals. Besides charging six defendants, prosecutors also seized 48 internet domain associate, domains associated with the service. And I remember years ago, one of our friends used to say, here, I can do this. I don't want to mention names. but. Uh, it, it 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 was something that you could do to put a, to do this. Now with today's hardware, I don't know that it's as that easy to launch. I don't know. I've had it happen to me while playing video games. When I play multiplayer games, I've had it happen to me when I play League of Legends. I'll get close to this player, and and uh, then all of a sudden my computer and my game will be lagging, and my connection will be lagging, and then I'll get disconnected. Uh, hmm. And then I've had it happen on League of Legends, and I've had it happen in Smite, and. Uh, I don't know the technicalness of it or whatever. Uh, what is it called? It's not getting DDoxed. Oh, what is yeah, the that's it. DDoxed. Oh, it is DDoxed? DDoxed. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, DDoxed. Yeah, yeah. So I've had that happen a uh, handful of times. And then we Denial just don't... of service. De uh, I don't know Denial, how they yeah. do it, though. So, like, I, I don't understand it. Uh, They're denying you service. The idea is to identify your IP. There's also, there's already a port open. And so what it does, it, it floods that IP at, at that port. Yeah, but how does connection get, requests? How did they get access to my IP through playing a video game? Is there like oh, it's software? machines. They just, well, it's not. It's peer to peer. No. So, yeah. Yeah. They just look at who is connected to them and they know that this and this IP belongs by by the amount of traffic coming in, they know that that IP belongs okay. to one of the player they're playing against, and so they just respond to that server with a DDoS attack, which doesn't come from their server. It comes from a multiple. Uh, you can automate this, so an automated. They're called bots, right? Automated mm -hmm. services uh, on 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 some cloud services and create that most cloud services monitor for that type of traffic and they try to block it uh they will shut that that down immediately but there are some actors who don't really care right mm -hmm. and so um they manage to do it on one hand i look at it as a form of a compliment because it's like i'm playing so well and you suck so bad that you have to <laughs> come after me <laughs> It's uh, um, you know, it's uh, it's the poker player with the ace in the sleeve, right? It's uh, and what's funny is that common uh, as uh, as the games themselves. What's funny is is that a, a one person that did that to me, he, his his team still ended up losing. So that's how bad they were. <laughs> All right, let me ask this: Does any of you work for a company that used Citrix? Never heard of it. Mm, yeah, so no, I supported I supported companies who worked with Citrix in my previous All right, job. so the U.S. National Security Agency is warning that Chinese government-backed hackers are explo exploiting a zero-day vulnerability in two widely used Citrix networking products to gain access to targeted networks. The flow, the flaw, affects Citrix ADC an application delivery controller, 
and Citrix Gateway, a remote access tool, and are both popular in enterprise networks. The critical rated vulnerability allows an unauthenticated attacker to remotely run malicious code on vulnerable devices, no password needed. Um, limited exploits of this vulnerability have been recorded. Citrix hasn't specified which industries the targeted organizations are in or how many have been compromised, which is good. But uh, if you use Citrix or your company is using Citrix, I'm sure by now the system administrator know about, knows about this, but mention it. Um, Tim Cook. Now I don't, I don't, I don't understand the Tim, Apple, the Tim Apple. Tim Apple. Tim Apple has tweeted an admission that Apple uses Sony image sensors in its iPhones as part of the CEO supplier tour of Japan. Why is this supposed to be a secret? Did they say they weren't? Yeah. Say so, so, okay, then they were lying. We've been partnering with Sony for over a decade to create the world's leading camera sensors for iPhone. And thank Sony CEO for showing him around the facility. It is, I mean, the rest of the article said that, that they always try to keep it hush hush what they're using. Yeah, I, well, I it's because they want to make it as if they are making all of the components, and the reality is they're not. Well, uh, no, I think it's about sourcing. Uh, um, the i can fix it uh, stuff right it's yeah like, true uh, i i think it's about that it's like what's the original but if if this comes from sony wouldn't it be written on the components well that's sony? the thing you see i mean i right. don't understand like, well, sony might be that's... white labeling it for them yeah maybe the secret is out yeah i see the <laughs> yeah i mean so what ridiculous. secret you know what Shh. Oh, apple honey. also has confirmed I'm, so i'm i'm guessing i'm guessing the subtext of this i'm whenever there's an article i'm trying to find the subtext why is the article being published okay so i'm guessing sony is giving them some sort of uh uh, uh sony is agreeing to the pricing right in exchange for publication here. okay maybe i mean that's what that's, i was that's thinking that's my guess sony should take credit for it and should be able to take credit that's probably part of the deal all right, so Apple has confirmed that it, an iPhone software update it released two weeks ago fixed a zero-day security vulnerability that it now says was actively exploited. I'm glad to see that it wasn't publicized, and they only talk about it after they fix it. That's a good strategy. The update. That's, that's usually the case. I don't know. Here is Citrix talking about this, and they don't even know when they're going to have a fix. That's because they don't understand the well, hack. <laughs> <laughs> the update, iOS uh, 16.1.2, landed on November 30th and rolled out to all supported iPhones, including iPhone 8, and later with unspecified important security updates. So if you are holding off updating your iPhone, um, go ahead and do it because you need to get 16.1.2. Yes. Another point, uh, Amnon, on yeah. that, uh, you said a good strategy. Yeah. Citrix, they're bound by laws, right? Especially if they work in the EU, right? Once a hack has come, they are not allowed to, um, um, they, they must report it in less than two weeks to government authorities okay and apple the is not they talk with the government apple as well yeah but if you fix it in less than two oh, weeks, oh okay then you can you okay. can treat it at, right that's the thing okay. it's like they are there's a very very short window in which they need to deal with it okay right mostly because gdpr at this point so citrix will right. be citrix and apple probably were on top of it Quick, quickly enough that's all and staying with apple which is interesting also apple is preparing to allow alternative app stores on its iphones and ipads part of a sweeping overhaul aimed to, at 
complying with strict European Union requirements coming in 2024. Software engineering and service employees are engaging in a major push to open up key elements of Apple platforms, according to people familiar with the effort. As part of the change, customers could ultimately download third-party software to their iPhones and iPads without using the company's App Store, sidestepping Apple's restrictions and the up and the up to 30% commission it imposes on payment. The moves, a reversal of long-held policies, are a response to EU laws aimed at leveling the playing field for third-party developers and improving the digital lives of consumers. For years, regulators and software makers have complained that Apple and Google, which run the two biggest mobile app stores wield too much power as gatekeepers. This is probably also has to do something with the Apple. case. Yeah, with Apple yeah but see, sure, yeah. it's it's a little the app. At least on Google, you can install third party app stores yeah. and third party apps. There are that is right. not allowed. I, I still don't believe, and I saw this story this week. Yeah. I still refuse to believe that this is actually going to happen. I guess we're, uh, none of this uh, stuff. We have to because wait and Apple see. has Apple has zero interest in this. This destroys their whole thing. Yeah, but there are laws that they need to comply. Yeah, with. they'll yeah, but they'll find some way to skirt their, their skirt so themselves. So it won't around. be available in the U.S. until it's ruled. Well, and that's and that's the thing is, you know, there's always something with it. Right. The Apple and is besides. Uh, look, this is actually going to be interesting. So even oh, well, if definitely it's region locked, right? If even if it's region locked. Think about this. It it might be region locked, but then people in the U.S. will stop buying, uh, at least a, a small portion, right? Will stop buying directly from the uh, uh, the networks, and they'll buy uh, unlocked international phones just just for that. Yeah, I mean, long term, this will eventually happen. I think eventually, long, it eventually will will happen and will be the norm. Um, but Apple is I mean, not going to go down they, without a fight. They're still talking about 2024. Oh, I understand. But between now and so 2024, it's... they will do everything in their power yeah. to make sure this, yeah. this oh, doesn't yeah. happen. They will, they, this, with something like this, the ecosystem that Apple has developed and built starts yeah. to fall apart. Mm -hmm. and they don't want so here's Here's how sure. this is going to be unveiled. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure, right? So in Android, the way to install from a third-party store, right? Uh, there's two ways. One is uh, um, the way Samsung is doing it, right? When you buy a Samsung uh, phone, Samsung tries to push their own app store sure. instead of the Play Store, right? Those are signed into the OS. Those will work. Uh, you can install either from one or the other, right? The other is you enable unknown sources, and then you can install a third-party app, um, app store like um, um, Aurora or uh, uh, F-Droid. Amazon. And Amazon, right. Uh, uh, and, and, and that will be, uh, you can't get them from the app store, right? You need to find a way to install that on your own. There are a suite of tools, security tools, right, uh, run by enterprises who, um, who protect their systems uh, where um, it's called a, a, a mobile MDMs. I don't remember the, the, the what mobile the Mobile device name. management. A, exactly, mo mobile device management. And that means that when a mobile device um, reaches out to a company resource, there's a handshake that goes on and there's a testing uh, of vulnerabilities on the phone to see if the phone should connect to the network. I am guessing that specifically on iPhones, because they haven't done so on Androids, specifically on iPhones, if there is uh, a third-party store, it's going to be blocked, right? So Apple is going to deal with this by probably uh, providing these security companies the best tool possible to identify this, right? So it'll be discouraged, like completely. If you get a company phone, right? 
oh no, you're not going to install a third party app, uh, app store. And this will still be within the, the laws. They allow it, right? But security experts say it's not good. And this is going to be the conversation about how bad a third party store is going to be. You can put it if you want to, but it's so bad. It's such a bad idea. And that's the whole marketing that's going to be. News article about that. Uh, uh, maybe even some court rulings, right, about uh, uh, security experts uh, uh, recommending not to do that, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they're going to allow it. Yes, it's going to take another couple of years. They're going to allow, I mean, th the fact that it's going to take another couple of years, right? What type yeah. of development do you need to stop blocking something? <laughs> you just need to open something, right? Uh, people have been jailbreaking iPhones uh, since since it was out, so it's it's possible. The technology is there; they know exactly how to do it. It's uh, yeah, I find it's I find it interesting. Uh, the consumer is gonna win, but it's going to be brainwashed into refusing. All right. Okay. Parents. Here is something that you should know, you should be aware of. A little known phone monitoring app called XNSPY. Uh, I, uh, I wouldn't know how to pronounce it. It's XNSPY. Has stolen data from tens of thousands of iPhones and Android devices. The majority whose owners are unaware that their data has been compromised. The product is one of many so-called stockware apps sold under the guise of allowing a parent to monitor their child's activities, but are explicitly marketed for spying on a spouse or domestic partner's devices without their permission. Its website boasts, to catch a cheating spouse, you need XN Spy on your side. And XN Spy makes reporting and data extraction simple for you. Um, if you're a parent and you think about it, don't use that product anyway. I have no idea how to detect. They, nobody was talking about how to detect on your phone if you have a problem with the spouse to see if. They are spying on you, how you can find out. But it's, uh, it's a problem. And to end today with, Microsoft Chromium-based Edge browser was an improvement over the initial version of Edge in many ways, including its support for Windows 7 and Windows 8. But the end of the road is coming. Microsoft has announced that Edge will end support for Windows 7 and Windows 8 in mid-January of 2023, shortly after those operating systems stop getting regular security updates. So Windows 7 still gets security updates? Apparently, yeah. Hmm. Just security, nothing else. I mean, yeah. I mean, oh, I realize. Yeah. Yeah, I thought that ended already. Yuppers. All right. Anything else, guys? Nope. Just enjoy the holiday season. Stay warm. We'll be here next week, right? Oh, yeah. I won't. Well, I'm yeah. I'm going to be sleeping. Did, did you? No, you're not. You're going to be here. Did you approve? Did you get your day <laughs> off approved, Katie? <laughs> yeah, I gave myself approval. <laughs> Amnon, you want to build a fire pit in your yard? No. No, that sounds out. fun. Oh my gosh. I'll come over if you do that. <laughs> I'll I love bring, fire. I'll bring marshmallows and yeah. <gasps> crackers and chocolate. Let's do it. We can stream it. Okay, if we do that, I'll come over. And then you can pull out your hot tub, right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Then the hot tub comes out. Yeah. Uh, Costco cool. has a portable one you can get. It's like uh, $600. I'll for be, a hot tub. I'll be uh, on remote. Back yeah, in New York. yeah, you're gonna be in New York in your old, old stomping, old house. studio. Yeah. Okay, guys. Well, uh, before I forget, I just want to say, 
Happy Hanukkah, yes. which starts tonight is the first candle. And Merry Christmas. And happy Kwanzaa and Happy New Year and Happy Holiday Season to everybody out there. Uh, Nick, you have a safe trip home. Thanks. Thanks for letting me stay. Doing the show. Talking about New York. Oh. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll find Don't out. have a safe trip to Wilmington. Yeah, That's yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no. Only to New York. <laughs> You'll need it more. All right. Well, in that case, thanks, Nick. Thank you. Thanks, Katie. No problem. Thanks, Thank Gal. Gal, we'll see you tonight. And thanks, Spence. I hope the foot continues to heal and and you'll be able to walk soon. I to walk easy. You get back to tap yeah. dancing again. Yeah. I'm very excited about it. Get your stamina up so you can go back to doing the can can. Mm. <laughs> and good morning, Kathy, Hannah, Nabil, Mac, Norm, Donna. Dina, Mati, Eleanor, Sarid, Jacob, and Yael. Thank you, everybody, for tuning to Computers 2K Now. We hope you enjoyed and maybe learned something from our time together. Remember to practice safe computing, back up your hard drive, and update your virus scanner. We'll be back here next Sunday at 9, but you can always reach us at computers2know.com. And again, Monday through Friday, 6 to 9 a.m., whether he's there or not, Nick is on Wilmington's 980 The Wave and 107.9 FM in Wilmington. You can tell your Echo device to play 980 The Wave and you can listen to him live. Or you can go to the recordings at nickcraig.com. And Tuesdays, 7 p.m., Nick and Brian do the Infection Podcast, which is for survival games and gaming news on Twitch. So Tuesday evening 7, twitch.tv slash infection podcast. One word. And we'll see you next week. Take it easy, everybody. tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archives section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.